we were talking about the collaboration between international uh, you know between countries especially india and yeah. the uk during the time yeah. of the pandemic yes and uh, you know the collaborations essentially made a lot of changes in terms of the global supply chain as well yeah uh, so you know in terms of even semiconductors for instance uh, India is witnessing a lot of changes, yes. and we don't know yes. how it's going to shape out in the next few years. Well, it's a it's a hot topic. Yes, but there is a lot of development in terms of announcements of new manufacturing hubs and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. where do you see mm -hmm. this going, Professor? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really important um, issue, and it's an issue um, again where you've got the application and development of scientific activities and how they move into the supply chain. I mean, semiconductors is a really good example because you know the world. Um, condensed and condensed and condensed down in terms of its manufacturing of semiconductors and really ended up with Taiwan as, as very dominant um, in silicon right. production. I mean, the other, the other semiconductors may be uh, less so, um, particularly the um, uh, compound semiconductors. But certainly for, for silicon, uh, mm -hmm. Taiwan produces something like 85% of the world's silicon. Right. And having that in one place, um, particularly in an area which is so geopolitically vulnerable, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons, is clearly a very bad thing. And I think one of the things that COVID did is it made people realize that you can't have all your vaccines produced in one place. Right. You need a distribution for resilience. And it's this right. resilience uh, word. Um, and, and it's suddenly become very clear as well, I think, for semiconductors. Right. So the US is going to certainly um, develop its um, technology capability. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very interesting actually because it's not really about the patents, it's mm -hmm. not really about the technology, it's about the know how. Right. It's those people who really know how to produce those balls of silicon again and again. Right. But there are other semiconductors, like, as I said, the compound semiconductors, the indium phosphides, the gallium arsenides, and all these other exotic sounding materials. Yeah. They're also important from uh, a point of view of sensors. Right. And as, as time goes on, we're more and more dependent on sensor technologies. Right. So I think there's going to be partnerships developing, and certainly the UK is considering about how it is involved in this whole semiconductor issue. As far as clean energy is concerned and mm. this is uh, quite a bit of a deviation from where we were. Well, except that silicon, <laughs> of course, is the basis of solar cells. So yes. it's not quite such a deviation, but go on. Yes. Uh, and if I may just add on, India has, uh, you know, taken initiatives like the International Solar Alliance, which is now becoming a global movement. Yes. And it's uh, growing very well. And I think there is a recognition and an acknowledgement even in India's public and the uh, public sphere yeah. that clean energy is very important especially to mitigate the glo uh, you know climate crisis and also you know to reduce our dependency on different uh, sorts of fuels yes uh, so in that sense you know what is the challenge ahead of us as a global community and even for a country like india so you know we're back to this um, issue about engineering challenges are systems based issues right, right? so in terms of renewable energy in particular um, the sun shines you have solar cells, yes. they produce electricity. During night, there uh, isn't any sun, so yes. they can't be producing any. For us, we have a lot of wind power, right. but, it, but again, it's intermittent. Um, uh, it's not quite as predictable as day and night yeah. even. So yeah. there's, a, there's a slightly different problem. So how do you put the solar issues, the wind issues, um, together with batteries and battery storage, and from my point of view, also nuclear, right. you've got a systems approach that you need to develop in order to understand what gives you resilience right. again. So engineering resilience and shared understanding of engineering resilience is mm -hmm. going to be much more, I think, at the heart of these sorts of collaborations.